Welcome to another episode of the Asian Seller Podcast. I'm your host, Meghla Pardwaj, and on today's episode, I have with me Habib Raka from QC Advisor, and we're going to be talking about a very interesting concept, which is virtual factory tours. Hi, Habib. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hi, Meghla. Nice to have you. Nice to see you. Good. Thanks. Yeah, really nice to see you too. I mean, we've known each other for quite a while now and uh, we've met in Hong Kong and we've exchanged some notes over the years with, uh, you know, your love for Indian music and (laughs) you've traveled to India as well. So, yeah. Um, Okay, I'm very excited to learn more about your new service, which is uh, basically, you know, these virtual factory tours and audits that you've been doing. But before we get into that, uh, Habib, do you want to give an introduction to people and just tell them, what exactly is it that you do? Where are you based? What's your background, your history? And yeah, how do you help importers? Yeah, so uh, I'm Habib al I grew up in, uh, in Morocco and uh, then I went to France for study and working. Um, I had the chance to uh, visit China for the first time in 2008 as a quality engineer uh, for, uh, for an automotive company. Uh, French automotive company. So it was the first time for me to discover uh, China and it was in Shanghai. Uh, after that, I, I came back to France. I was uh, working for, uh, for, for a company there as an engineer and uh, it was quite uh, boring for me. So after a few years, after three years, I, I, I decided to really come back to China and uh, I resigned and uh, I took uh, two luggages and uh, I arrived in Shenzhen where I I worked for a, a third-party QC company at that time in, in Shenzhen. So since 2012, I'm involved uh, in consumer goods, uh, consumer goods third-party quality control in China, and also uh, with uh, some other countries like uh, South Asia, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and Vietnam as well. Uh, and um, so I traveled a lot. I met a lot of people uh, in China. I traveled almost all the provinces in China uh, to visit factories. So um, I was really on the ground learning a lot about how they behave, uh, what are the problems, how, what are the root cause of these problems, etc. So it was an uh, intense uh, learning period for me in terms of manufacturing and quality control. And in 2018, I started uh, my own, uh, let's say, consulting uh, services as a a consultant. Uh, So quality control services, uh, product qualification, specification, factory audit. So I was the one doing this by myself. Uh, And little by little, I got more and more requests. So I started to hire people uh, in China, some inspector, auditor to help me time to time. And uh, now, after uh, three years, we are a small team already in China. We have about 24 people, uh, so uh, mostly inspectors and uh, auditor. And I also have two people in India, uh, which is also, uh, I mean, uh, growing, uh, growing market. And uh, I also like the way the people uh, work there. It's a little bit different from China. They have their own strength and uh, and uh, specificities. So yes, yeah, so now we are uh, we are providing uh, QC services, uh, factory audit, inspection, uh, with a more let's say customized approach than the usual inspection companies, and also with a proactive approach, uh, without being a consulting company now, but uh, we try to help people really uh, uh, avoid defect instead of just like finding finding. And also what we, we, I'm trying to do is to use as much as possible um, technology to help us uh, give more value to our clients uh, in terms of uh, I mean, quality control, helping them manufacturers, manufacture easier uh, in China. Right. So first of all, a team of 24 is not small. It's pretty big, <laughs> I think. Uh, you know, and... Uh, yeah. So, so talking about technology, um, you know, you mentioned that you have these virtual factory audits. So let's dive right into it. You know, tell tell us about what exactly is this virtual factory tours that you have uh, come up with? How does it work? And, uh, you know, first of all, why did you decide to come up with this uh, virtual factory tour? 
Yes, so 2020 was a very uh, strange year for everyone, I think. And uh, uh, myself, I was in Morocco in in February for for the Chinese holiday, for Chinese New Year holiday, while the the pandemic started in in China. So at that time, the peak was in China and Europe, USA, all over the world. We were just hearing about this, and. Um, at that time, I was I was really thinking, what should I do? Uh, should I should I go back uh, or should I wait a, a little bit? Um, and uh, my family, of course, uh, did not uh, did not advise me to go back because, uh, especially my mom, so they were uh, really uh, worried about about the situation. But on, on my side, I was thinking there might be some opportunities. Uh, and there might be uh, like uh, maybe some chance uh, to do things uh, because I knew many people uh, who were in the same position as me and they were blocked there. Um, so my instinct was right and I decided to go back to China early March while, it was, while the pandemic was still very strong in China. Uh, and um, when I arrived at that time, there was no uh, quarantine, etc. So... Uh, and the, the borders were still open with uh, like normal visa. Um, so when I arrived, uh, the the border were, were were closed few days after I arrived, and uh, uh, I realized that the situation will be really really crazy if if uh, if buyers, uh, if uh, like importers, etc., that are used to visit China. Uh, uh, could not, uh, cannot come to cannot uh, I mean visit China at, at that time. So we were not really sure what would happen because factories were still closed uh, were still closed in China uh, or were very restricted in terms of travel uh, even within provinces or be, between provinces. Uh, so we were just waiting and in let's say end of March, uh, beginning of April, we started having more and more requests like daily people asking us please help us to check masks we need to check masks we need to check factory uh, we need to audit the factory and uh, we were we were having really a lot of requests uh, like a kind of mix between audit and inspection at that time so uh, we were a little bit like relieved to see that we, we had we, we start having some business again because during february we had zero order uh, and um, it was the start of good news. Uh, while doing the factory uh, visits, most of the people, I mean, ask us for a lot of video of this factory to see how the factory is, uh, to have a little bit of good feeling about the factory, to make sure that the factory is, is the one producing the mask because there was extremely high amount of scam scams at that time. And uh, a lot of factories were new, uh, new to masks uh, production. So uh, to make sure that the, the, the supplier is the real uh, producer, manufacturer, etc., we had to take a lot of video. Um, so following this, we started having like a kind of habit. We had like our audit report, which is in PDF, and with all the element, with all the inspection part, etc., about the mask quality, the mask, the shipping mark, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we always started having this kind of habit of having the PDF report plus some videos of production line. Um, then I was discussing with, uh, in like summer, I was discussing with one of my uh, German client who happens to be a 360 camera, uh, let's say, uh, expert. And he told me, why don't you do, uh, why, why don't you do virtual tour of the factory? And today, actually, I was thinking about this, but I think it, it might be very difficult, uh, and uh, the investment might be high, etc. He, he, after discussing like for one weekend, I remember we had like one weekend discussing about how technically we could implement this, uh, what kind of material we need, what kind of um, tripod we need, uh, what kind of software we need to uh, to put all the pictures together to make a, a factory tour. And we came up like in October, November with some first sample of a uh, virtual factory tour I did uh, like for free for some clients to see how it works, what's the feedback. So the first feedback were really good uh, for, uh, I mean, for our clients. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, all good. 
Yeah, so the first feedback were, were really good from, from our clients and uh, especially the clients who are used to, to visit China like twice, three times a year. Uh, I'm thinking about some like uh, CEOs or quality directors of, of uh, mid-sized big companies who, who really need to go uh, and visit the, the factory to feel uh, I mean, beside the audit uh, reports from the third party or their own team, they need to go there and, and, and feel how the factory is, how they are organized. And so are these pictures or are these videos, you know, just to explain to people what sort of um, interface we are talking about. And sure. if you want, you can share your screen and, you know, for people watching on YouTube, they can actually try to, they can see what it actually looks like. And if you are um, watching, if you're listening to the audio podcast, then we'll try to explain or describe what Habib is showing on the screen um, over here. So yeah, I just want to understand if it's, you know, just photos. Okay, so there it is. So yeah, why don't you also, Habib, maybe explain what, yes, what so, we see over so, here. Uh, I'm, I'm talking from China, so the quality uh, of the connection might not be very good, but I think you can have uh, an idea of what it is here. Uh, so you see the screen, right? Yes, I can see the screen. I can also see you moving um, you know, left and right and sort of navigating that photo. So this is basically one photograph that's taken with a 360 degree camera. And so basically we can move our cursor and we can move um, you know the image around just like a 360 degree photo exactly exactly so basically a virtual tour is like a kind of simulation of uh, existing location uh, that is composed of, of like a sequence of video or or, or uh, images that are 360 degree uh, images or video in our case it's um, 360 degree images that are um, shot by a 360 camera like this, so this is like a simple 360 camera. This is the most basic one. It's a it's a Rico one. Theta. It's very good quality. And but we have more and more better quality, which is a little bit bigger, etc. Um, so what we do is we take uh, 360s um, uh, pictures all over the factory, and then we assemble them. Uh, and for each picture, we will link. We will link it to another picture. For example, this one is at the main entrance, and I will link it. Uh, for example, for the here for the first floor where they do raw material uh, and where they store raw material and they do injection. So here you can visit for you can visit the, the injection part, and you can go this way. You can go straight, then you can go here. You can turn and see all over the place. 360. You can you can see the the top. You can see. Uh, how people are organized. You can see, for example, this factory has good uh, management of uh, labels for uh, material, semi-finished product, like injected part. So you can have an idea of how they are organized. Then uh, we have different, we can also move to, this factory is a five-story factory. Uh, we can move to, for example, the second floor. So here we are in, in the second floor. Are you able to see well what, what I'm sharing? No, we're, uh, I'm currently just seeing, okay, yeah, now we're in the second floor, yeah. Now I can see the assembly line, the blue, the floor is blue and, yeah. So we go straight here, we see the assembly line, and we can visit this way, the factory, all over the place. So we really can have a full tour of the factory by ourselves. So if I am a buyer, uh, I, can, I, can, I can go wherever I want in the factory. Yeah, this is very interesting and it's sort of similar to, you know, maybe Google Maps where you have street view of Google Maps where you can navigate around different streets. So it's it's sort of similar to that. You're almost like traveling within the factory and yes. going from one location to another. Um, and it's very detailed. I mean, I really think that, you know, that the, the video quality is very detailed. So I can actually see what's, uh, see very clearly what, you know, the, 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 the products are on the assembly line, although it's not very clear, but um, it's it's pretty sharp. Uh, the image quality is really good as well. The image quality is good, and we are trying to improve this. But 
you, it's important to know that the VR tour now are really in a kind of boom, uh, especially in the real estate and the tourism industry. Uh, real estate is really becoming like a complete, um, completely usual now to have a VR tour. Uh, if, if you want to buy an apartment in USA or France, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming something completely normal. For VR tour, for museum, for example, it's also uh, now something that most museums in the world, like uh, Le Louvre in, in Paris, uh, they have their own VR tour with high quality uh, uh, images that you can uh, use and you can zoom and you can see the, the, I mean, the painting, the art, uh, uh, etc. So for factories, this is something that's uh, starting to, to happen now. I, I think we are the only one who started in 2020. I see some people that start being interested in implementing this uh, with their, uh, within their services. I believe this will be an important uh, part of, uh, of audit services in the future because this uh, brings really a lot of value for people who cannot travel. And also, I guess after the pandemic, we will still have, uh, we will still keep some habits that we we took during this like pandemic, especially like working from home, uh, trying to save money uh, for companies instead of sending one QC director from USA to, uh, to China and pay like five thousand, ten thousand uh, dollar. They might uh, they might use these kind of services to visit the factory. Especially right. can be very. Um, useful when you are selecting like five, ten factories and you want to check, you don't want to visit all of them. Uh, yeah. So uh, how long does it take you to, or your team, to take pictures of one factory? Because of course you have to take very detailed pictures of you know each and every location. So uh, how long does it take to you know complete one whole factory? For a small factory, let's say uh, one floor factory in Shenzhen, which is very common, uh, which does like electronic product and uh, mostly does assembly, uh, we need about 25 shots. Like, uh, okay. So 25 shots, it's, it's quite quick. Uh, it mm -hmm. takes about 45 minutes, one hour, uh, and then we're done. For a big factory uh, like this one, where we have like five floors and you need to take a lot of pictures for every floor, it's like 60, 60 to 70 shots. Uh, it's quite detailed now, so really to allow people to, to visit the whole factory by themselves, they can even go to, you can see here, I can even go to the last last uh, like warehouse, uh, I can go uh, to check the carton, uh, like component, raw material. You see, like I really can go wherever I want in the factory, and uh, I can see I can see the carton here. So this one will take about two hours uh, to take all the pictures in detail, make sure all the pictures are okay. That there is no sometimes you have someone with uh, like uh, moving or maybe we can see your hand, etc. So you need to also make sure that the pictures are clear, that there is no one in front of the camera at that time. Um, right. Oh, so it's it's between the two hour to four hour job for every factory. Okay, and so how are you utilizing this service currently? I mean, is it uh, are you only doing it for people who are requesting for a factory audit, and is it just for you know one client, or are you doing this for many factories, and then it's accessible to lots of different buyers or anybody who wants to access these audits? It's available to them. How does it work? Uh, we started with our uh, own uh, client to see how it works. Uh, for now, our own clients, only our own clients are asking for these services, uh, mostly for audit, uh, when they want to qualify a new factory and they want to see how the factory looks like. But uh, the very interesting thing is that I, just two hours ago, uh, for example, I already got some requests of Chinese factories uh, who want uh, their factory to be uh, visited and with the VR tour, and so they can show to their client. Actually, this this kind of uh, virtual tour exists already uh, and is offered by platform like Alibaba. So uh, when you are like um, a gold supplier, you might benefit from this and you might get your virtual factory tour uh, to show um, to show your factory. But uh, I would say. Our factory tour is more detailed because we really go wherever there is. I mean, we go 
everywhere in the factory. And we do it with a third party quality control company approach. We don't do it with a, like a advertising company approach. Uh, we do it to show what the factory really is, like an audit. Like if, if factory asks us, ask us to do it, we are going to show everything. We're not going to hide some, some things or lie or say that uh, this factory is actually part of uh, this company while actually it is not. Like so, you can see here we have the the information of the the, the, the factory. Like uh, this is the company, uh, and uh, this is QC advisor verified, and the date was on uh, Christmas. You see, on Christmas we were working, where people were having fun, and and uh, yes, yeah, so this is the different approach. So now we are going to start after doing some testing with our client. We are going to start market this service by itself uh, like soon coming days uh, we already have the material we already have uh, everything so stuff on LinkedIn now I do it with you as well uh, thank you for inviting me to talk about this so so the goal is really have this service or uh, paired with the factory audit right so uh, does this then if somebody wants to get a factory audit done by you um, you know, how much would this cost? How much does a current factory audit cost? And then if they want to do a virtual tour, how much does that add to the cost of the factory audit? And if you want, you can stop sharing the screen now. I think it's pretty good. Got a good idea of what it looks like. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so uh, a factory audit uh, starts, our, our price starts at around $180. So it's like a basic factory audit uh, when you want to select a new supplier. You want to know if they are legit, if they are not a scam, if they have the right document, the right certification. Uh, and also you want to know their production capacities, the, the kind of product they, are, uh, they can produce and they are used to produce the kind of market they work with. Like do they work with the USA mostly or do they work with South America or do they work with Middle East or Europe? So. This is a basic audit that we have at 280. Uh, for now, uh, the add-on, uh, let's say, of the VR tour um, for, uh, starts around $380 for VR tour. So this is the price we have. And this is all from experience, etc. We are able to cover most industrial parts of China with this VR tour uh, because we have invested quite a lot in terms of uh, material. When we're going to invest now more and more uh, if we have uh, more uh, needs uh, regarding this. OK. Yeah, I think it's uh, going to be very useful because uh, you know so many people, they, they're not able to travel, of course, because of the pandemic. But even for you know maybe a lot of smaller sellers, like I work with a lot of Amazon and e-commerce companies. And these are you know smaller sellers. And many times, they are not able to travel to China and to, to, you know, whether there's a pandemic or not. So I think it will be very useful for those types of entrepreneurial um, importers as well, so that they can get a really good idea of how production hap happens in these factories. So I think it's really exciting. And uh, so how many virtual tours have you done so far? Now, since the, the start, we have done about 45 virtual tours with our existing client, so okay. which is which uh, I mean, which is quite a lot. Uh, people, uh, I mean, I was not expecting that much because actually we were we did it just before the Chinese New Year, uh, like the, the, the six weeks before Chinese New Year. You can see this one was done end of December, and uh, people are are asking us uh, more about it. And uh, I'm also very keen to listen to our customers because we're in a, like learning curve now. Uh, so. We try to hear, uh, listen to, to our clients, uh, see what what they would like, what they what they don't like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, to tune a little bit this service. Right. And so, can this also be used for inspections, or is it only for factory audits, or is there some other version that can be used for inspections that maybe incorporates video as well? Uh, exactly. So what we are thinking about, but we are not implementing yet, is a live uh, 360 um, uh, VR uh, camera that would be near the inspector. So it's like if you are with the inspector actually uh, on the ground. 
so you can you can move the camera and this is even more powerful uh, now we have some ch technical challenges uh, regarding material but also regarding uh, connection as you can see now even you and me on skype we still have some some bugs uh, time to time so you can imagine if if i'm in the middle of nowhere in china it's it's it might be a little bit more complicated, but we are, we are trying to see how we could work. Uh, we already have a client that asks us this, this this service, so we are studying how to do it. We might start uh, with video, like simple video, but uh, my goal is really to have this because what's powerful in this is really you are able to navigate by yourself. You don't ask. We cannot hide anything for you. I mean, you can see uh, the video, to, the VR tour I show you. You go wherever you want, and then you can zoom. You can really like you move by yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's very powerful. And how else are you incorporating video? So this is just photos, but are you also incorporating videos into these factory audits in the virtual tour? Uh, not yet. We are not yet uh, because. Like this is a kind of static virtual tour. What we want to uh, add and what we can add actually now is mostly uh, in the in the tour for each uh, image, we can also add like a document. For example, in some precise some PDF document, which or a picture, for example, which is a picture of, let's say, some records of like uh, inspection record of the factory. So this might be even more powerful because it will allow people to really uh, double check everything by themselves if they want. Uh, or we can have like a clear picture of the shipping mark of the carton, for example. Uh, so we can add this. This is, this is easy to do. Yeah, I think this is very powerful, Habib, and I feel that there should be a lot of demand for this uh, because it's uh, yeah, it's it's very groundbreaking. And what kind of feedback are you getting from your current clients about this? Uh, clients uh, really like it. They ask me. Some of them ask me to add this kind of. Uh, also, at the end, they might might not have uh, to get like the PDF report, but they want to have everything in the virtual tour. So, for example, when you go somewhere, you can see, you can write, okay, this is a uh, troll number one, and there are like uh, 25 workers, and they do this kind of process. They do like uh, assembly or they do uh, injection. And uh, we can see the non conformities as below, like 1.1 is a non conformity about uh, uh, workers not wearing PPE or non conformity about uh, lack of uh, QC records, etc. So, some client, two clients already asked me this. Uh, I think it might be interesting. Technically, I think it's it's a little bit more difficult now uh, to prepare than a, than a, like a PDF report because the PDF report is like checklist and you say yes, no, and then you write your comment. But uh, we are working to see how we can make it easier. Okay, fantastic. So let's also talk about uh, you know in general what sort of QC trends you are seeing. Um, in, in China. So first of all, a lot of the audiences that listen to this podcast, they're new entrepreneurs. They're just starting out sourcing from China or other countries. So what sort of quality control related advice do you have for someone who is just starting to source products? So when you look at uh, quality control, you need to look at the beginning of, of the process because quality control really starts at, uh, early, uh, early on. Uh, when, when you want to sell product on Amazon, usually we go on Alibaba. Uh, but Alibaba is not Amazon. Uh, Alibaba is different. It's a B2B approach. So you need to have a more uh, solid and more uh, formalized approach to buy products from Alibaba. It's not like when you go on the e-commerce website and you click and you buy something. Uh, plus, uh, you are dealing with people who are in the other side of the planet. So you need to also to adjust uh, this like kind of cultural difference uh, and um, and uh, prepare very well your uh, I mean your uh, sourcing from China. Uh, I guess the first part of uh, of uh, when you want to manufacture a product in China is to understand what kind of product you want. Uh, this is really the first part. It can be very quick. It, it does not have to be formalized. Uh, I'm not asking people to do like a kind of PPAP like uh, automotive. Uh, uh, industry or something like this. Uh, I don't want to make it too complicated. Even when you buy a simple product like a, like a mouse or, or something like this or a eyewear or sunglasses, etc., you need to know first what kind of product you want, what kind of function you want, 
for which market it is. Is it for kids? Is it for adults? Is it for maybe some product for black people only or for uh, Chinese people? So you, you, what kind of price you want? And also, where are you going to sell this product? Uh, are you going to sell this product in USA only or in South America? Uh, so when you are when you are done with this, uh, the second step uh, is uh, to write or to document your product specification. Product specification is not like a one-shot process you are going to finish in one afternoon. A product specification comes while talking with uh, maybe one supplier or several suppliers. Uh, it's kind of discussion based on the first analysis uh, we mentioned, like the functional analysis, which will include uh, the function of your product. So this will be translated into uh, product specification, uh, but also uh, regulatory standard. Uh, that are very important. So you need to know, for example, if you're uh, buying products for kids, uh, what kind of, of standard I need to uh, to meet to sell to USA, for example. If you are buying products that are in, in contact with your skin, you need also to be very careful about, uh, about uh, regulatory standard. Uh, so when you are done with this, uh, then you can be more clear about what kind of supplier you want to work with in China. And it's important to know that when you enter uh, in China, uh, when, you, when you meet or contact different suppliers, you are contacting a huge amount of, uh, you are like, it's like a kind of jungle. Uh, there are suppliers that uh, supply products uh, for Africa. There are suppliers that supply products uh, for Middle East, for Europe. There are suppliers that supply products that are very expensive, those that are very cheap. There are suppliers that just started the, one month ago to, to produce the, the product that you want. So because of that, and it's normal, it's not something that, that's bad, because China is really like a number one manufacturing powerhouse in the world. So they are, they, every, everything is here, everything you want. So you need to be uh, clear what kind of supplier you want, you want to work with. This is the third step. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, select it. It's a kind of, I would say, like when you want to date someone, you want, you want, you need to know what kind of, of people you want to meet. Otherwise, you might be disappointed. This is, this is, uh, this is very important. Right. Uh, so selecting the right supplier is very important. That's, I mean, if you if you've got the right supplier, then I guess, uh, you, you know, yes. a lot of the quality issues that you might have are, are so the risk is mitigated. One example, I'm talking with with a like a new new customer that just started one month ago. Her idea, and she wants to import uh, audio books to Europe. So audio books, uh, you know, those kind of like physical books with some like for babies, and you push and you have some sound, etc. Um, and her main uh, focus at the beginning was price and I told her don't focus on price now focus on what you need to have first what kind of regulatory standard you need for UK because uh, now there are different uh, they might be different for from Europe from I mean uh, uh, what kind of color you want what kind of material you want do you want it to be waterproof do you want it to be this kind of of uh, specification are very important don't don't start the price at uh, I mean the price is the last step. You discuss the price when you are done with your product. Because your goal when you start an e-commerce business, your goal is to sell product. So you need to make sure that uh, you can sell 10 products, uh, and then you can sell 100 products, and then you can sell 1,000 products. This, is, this must be the number one focus when you start e-commerce. I mean, also when you don't start e-commerce. But in e-commerce, it's very competitive now. And you need to make sure to have the right product. You can, I mean, now in 2021, uh, Amazon expect to have about one, 1 million plus people to join as, as a new uh, seller uh, for Amazon FBA. So it's, it's getting completely crazy. And if you don't have the right product, uh, if you just have a whatever product you find in the Chinese factory that you buy for $2 and then you want to be a millionaire with this, this does not work anymore. It used to work maybe five years ago, but it does not work anymore. There is a huge competition. So it's very important to, to be clear about what kind of product you want first, what kind of function. I mean, it seems very basic, but 
you need to follow this step. You need you need to do your homework because this is not B2C. You are not buying products from Amazon. You are buying from Alibaba and you are buying from suppliers that might not uh, be able to manufacture the product you want. Yeah, totally makes sense. And then um, what what are you seeing in terms of, you know, how do suppliers cut corners and, and uh, you know, suppliers try to maybe compromise on quality? What are some of the things that suppliers do that buyers need to be aware of uh, in terms of, you know, how suppliers cut corners? Uh, I think uh, I, I would not like to assume that suppliers cut corners because there are good suppliers and bad suppliers. Absolutely, yeah. Most, most of the issue I see, I mean, we, we are a QC company. We see issue every day uh, with quality, etc. Most of the issue we see in our industry are due to misunderstanding or unclear specification. I usually see a lot of suppliers who are aiming to uh, reach the specification or who will say, sorry, we cannot do this. But uh, so this is the number one uh, cause of, uh, of quality issue is really misunderstanding and clear specification. It's why I said when you start your, your business with a Chinese supplier, you need to be very careful and very clear about the product specification, about what kind of function you want to have. Because usually when you, when you give this to the supplier, the chances of, of having problems are really lower and lower. Uh, um, bad suppliers do exist, I mean, uh, that try to cut corner. Uh, mostly is uh, when suppliers use wrong material or uh, less, uh, I mean, uh, um, like a poor quality material than, than expected. And also when they don't uh, control the, their process. For example, uh, manufacturing process. For example, let's say I want to have Yesterday, we have a client, they want, they have a, a tote bag and they want to uh, print a very sharp logo uh, for their client in France on, the, on, the, on this bag. But this logo has about four colors and it's extremely difficult to have all the colors aligned and sharp when you are uh, using the technology, the, this, um, this uh, supplier regime, which is silk, silk screen. So, this kind of uh, like aspect must be taken into account when you when you are uh, finalizing your specification and also uh, choosing your supplier. So this is where we have uh, we have uh, like problems with uh, with quality. Right. So you mentioned that you also do quality control in India and other countries. So how is quality control or you know inspections and all different in India than they are in China? Because of course in India the products are also different. A lot of the products are handmade, for example, if you're looking at, you know, metal, wood products. So what are some of the key differences that you see between India and China? Um, I would say in India, we do have a lot of workmanship issue, uh, but it depends on what, what kind of product we are talking. Um, but the product we have in India uh, are less critical uh when they have uh, like workmanship issue like uh, mostly for example we have like uh, a lot of bags in south india we have a client that do does a lot of i, I have my my guys are based in tamil nadu uh, so they they uh, they inspect uh, there and then we have a partner as well for other part like gujarat and uh, and uh, rajasthan and uh, and uh, this kind of area um, we do have a lot of uh, issue for workmanship. Um, I, to be honest, I don't see like uh, like a huge difference uh, in terms of quality now because we see a lot of report. We we can see like uh, like um, like I don't know. It's true that in China, in China, we see the the peak between quality is much higher. Sometimes you see really some like disastrous uh, type of factory in China. Uh, in India, I, I, I mean, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't see like a big, big difference. Uh, okay, that's... The difference, the difference for, for between India and China is that mostly I would, I would say in India, my feeling is that managers, 
uh, or like factory owner are much more involved in their production. Uh, so this is what, what I see. Uh, while in, in China, you would see more like sales who speak English, etc. So for example, when we have problem uh, in India, the, the, the manager or like the factory owner will be much more involved in this and, uh, and try to solve the problem. Yeah, and a lot of the factories in India, I guess, are you know more mid-sized factories, so they're able to the owners are able to get involved as, as well, you know, directly. So yeah, yeah very interesting to note. And uh, uh, are you doing inspections in other countries as well, or like Pakistan? Yes. You mentioned is that yes. pretty much the same too over there? Yes, Pakistan was quite good uh, last year. We, I mean, we don't do uh, inspections like uh, China, but you, we do Pakistan as well. I think Pakistan has has a good year. Uh, uh, they did not have so much lockdowns, etc. I don't know how they could manage that. <laughs> uh, but uh, they did quite well. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, uh, Bangladesh, mostly Bangladesh. I think we don't have Amazon seller type. Uh, it's mostly like uh, big retailers uh, who uh, like uh, need, uh, like I don't want to say the word cheap, but uh, <laughs> garments. Like uh, let's say like, like this kind of, of, of product, and then yeah. Vietnam. Vietnam is for sure. Vietnam is really like uh, booming uh, a lot. Uh, uh, we start doing a lot of furniture. We did a lot of gloves as well, nitrile gloves, mm -hmm. and it was completely crazy. Uh, <laughs> nitrile gloves. Uh, I don't know if you 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 knew know people who were in this industry, but it was complete uh, madness. In, uh, like uh, six months. Uh, Yes, and Taiwan as well. Uh, Taiwan, time to time, we do some some order. Yes, but China is the, is the steep. China. Yeah, definitely. But well, us, yeah. As, I think you're. Uh, I mean, I follow what you do, like uh, India, South and Trade, etc. I, I, of course, India is. Uh, I'm. I'm also like I have a special connection with India, with uh, like. Uh, uh, I visit India. I used to visit India like once, twice a year before because of my passion to Indian classical music, but also to visit uh, at that time my partner uh, doing QC there. And uh, I mean, just if you do the math, uh, India India has a huge population. There are, there are huge uh, capabilities and. Uh, and India, for sure, the next 10 years uh, will be a very important place for uh, manufacturing. Uh, let's see how it goes. I think also the way the government manage uh, and deal with uh, uh, businesses, taxes, etc. Because I, I still can see like some, some sometimes some obstacle uh, to do business in India. You know, we, we need to pay like a lot of taxes, etc. But Let's see how it goes, but for sure, there are so many people uh, who are uh, capable of doing a good job there, and, uh, and for sure, India is, is, is next. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think if there's any other country that can compete with China in, in the future, it's probably India, and just because of the scale, the availability of raw materials, yes. availability of yes. labor, like low-cost labor over there. So I, I totally agree with you. I think in the next 10 years or so, there's going to be a lot of availability of, of uh, domestic market production. So uh, yeah. like China before, they have like domestic market production that switch to international uh, production. Uh, while we don't have this in, in a smaller country because smaller country will tend to uh, like be more dependent on like China or other big countries. Uh, while China and India, for example, when I go to India, you see uh, made in India cars, uh, made in India refrigerators, made in India TVs, etc. So what you see, uh, you have the, the capacity to switch in international uh, exports more easily than, uh, than other countries. That's right. And I do see a lot of electronics manufacturing happening as well. And you know, currently, of course, there, it's not being exported, but most of the electronics manufacturing is happening for the domestic market. And in fact, there are overseas companies that are setting up factories. So Foxconn has set up a factory, Xiaomi, all yes. of these companies. So I think over the next, you know, a few years, five, ten years, there will be technology transfer, and uh, there will there will be factory set up for OEM production. But yeah, it's it's. I think things move slower in India because of the democracy and a lot of sort of red tape. I also, 
I also think the main difference between China and what made uh, China uh, really stronger, uh, I mean, quicker, let's say, uh, is that China has its own uh, environment and system in terms of internet, in terms of uh, like um, a platform like Alibaba, etc. I think India, but I'm not the one to give advice. I just, this is my opinion. Huh? I think India should rely more on their own technology, on their own software platforms uh, and uh, rely less on American platform like Amazon, etc. I think this is this is something that that really will keep India always dependent on some like other uh, countries, etc. So if India wants to be strong, I think India should have its own Alibaba, its own Xiaomi, its own. Uh, uh, th this is this is the the way you want to go if you want to be that strong. But maybe they will. Maybe there will be a new paradigm that will be different and that we will discover in the five years. We, we, cannot, we cannot know 100%. That's true. And in fact, the current government does have some policies that promote made in India products more. I mean, even for use domestically, for example. So there's this campaign that they've started called Atman Nirbhar, that means self dependent. So, yes. you know, it, it really pushes for making products in the country and, and developing brands. So. Yeah, I, th I think that's happening as well. So, uh, it, but it is gradual for sure. <laughs> Great. Well, Habib, it, it's been really nice chatting with you uh, and uh, learning about your virtual factory tours, which I'm sure a lot of people will be very excited about. So do you also want to tell people quickly about your you know, services? So you do factory audits, inspections, and you know, just maybe if you want to talk a little bit more about your services and then how can people contact you? Yeah, so what we what we offer is a customized quality control services uh, that are like a kind of alternative to uh, big companies which are more like a commodity. So we try to customize the services with a different approach, which is more like a proactive approach to uh, make sure that your supplier is ready on time, that they understand your specification. Uh, Policy standard, etc. So when we go uh, at the factory, we already have everything clear, and we try to uh, inspect and ship the goods right away and make sure everything is right. So this is this is the approach we have. Uh, so we have a lot of communication before the, the inspection. We try to make it as automated as possible uh, to our system. We have an online system, and uh, the kind of service we offer uh, is the three-step. So of the, I mean, controlling your quality is supplier qualification, supplier audit, factory audit, social audit, uh, quality management system audit. So this is the first part when you want to qualify a supplier. The second part is product qualification. So prototype uh, qualification, specification, uh, documentation, etc. And the most important part and the most our volume of business comes from the product inspection because most of the time clients who contact us already have their own uh, like um, in-house product specification, et cetera, or they already have a supplier with a repeat order. So uh, product inspection uh, during before production, during production, before shipment, container loading inspections. So these are like quite basic services that are offered by, by inspection companies, but we try to add our customized uh, approach uh, the, if they want to reach us, they can go on uh, our uh, website, qcadvisor.com, and uh, we are very happy to, uh, I mean, to give solution to customers who have challenges with their uh, supplier in China, uh, to uh, suggest them the best way to deal with, with it, and also, yes, to answer the need by inspecting products or auditing factories. Right. And so how do you compare in terms of price with the other big companies? So there's, you know, like Kima and Btrust and all of those kinds of more like commodity kind of companies, as, as you mentioned. So in terms of price, how do you compare with them? Uh, we are, let's say, in the near the top range of, of the of the price, but we still I think we're still um, we're still competitive. I would tell you like. In China, normally uh, inspection services uh, would start around 150 uh, US dollar for for one man day. Uh, Two, 250, did you say? 150. 150. 150, 150 with uh, like uh, local companies uh, that have real uh, 
slow management because they don't have cost. The, the only cost is the inspectors uh, who do product, who do report, who do um, who do uh, like checklists, etc. Um, for companies like you mentioned, like Vitrust, which I respect a lot, and Kima as well, uh, the the price range is a little bit more than like 250, around 250 to 300 for. for we our our man, Monday price start at 280, and we have a special price uh, when you have several Mondays. Uh, like for example, you have inspection for three Mondays. The first Monday Monday is 280 dollar, and the second Monday and third Monday and the second Monday onward will be different pricing. Will be 180 dollar uh, because the price of preparing the inspection etc is the same uh, because it's the same inspection. Only the we only have the cost of inspectors and travel, etc. So this allow people uh, to to be able to have more workload done for some kind of inspection. For example, when they have many references, and uh, yes, because many people actually are not uh, willing to let's say have a complete inspection scope when they have a lot of references because they need to pay more. So what we do is we try to make it easier for them uh, when, when they face such situation. So these have our factory verification audit, which is uh, also at 280. Uh, it's like a fixed price, all inclusive in China, no travel expense, wherever you want in China. And uh, I think this is in the low range in terms of audit because we try to optimize uh, the audit to only focus on what the client needs. Usually when they want to select a supplier, they don't need to know if they have a quality policy or uh, they have like a purchasing procedure or they have like supplier list, etc. They want to know first if they have production capacity, if they, are, if they produce the right product, same as, as they want, if they have the ability to produce the, the product they want, etc. Et if they have production capacity. So yes, so this audit starts at two eighty dollar. Right. Yes, okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Habib, for coming on the show and uh, sharing all of this information. It was really nice catching it's up with pleasure. you. Make a, always a pleasure to talk to you. Very interesting. I hope we can travel soon and meet either in Singapore or India. I hope I can meet you in India actually. Really yeah, wonderful. that'd be fantastic. You should come yeah. on our trip. <laughs> India is really one of my favorite countries, and uh, I really miss India. I miss classical music concerts. I miss food. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot have the real Indian food here in Shenzhen. We have some like restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay, awesome, Habib. So you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.